Hey guys, so I thought I'd do an actual intro to this vlog because sometimes I forget. So this is my vlog for Shakespeare Festival. I'm so excited to be going. I've been looking forward to this for so long since we got the tickets pretty much, which was back towards the beginning of the year. I will be going with my friend Kariana, which will be great. She's wonderful. It will be wonderful. Very excited, like I said. For this intro, I'm just going to briefly mention what I'm reading and then some of the plays we'll be see seeing. So first of all, I am bringing Sold on a Monday by Christine. McMorris. Will I read any of this? Probably not, honestly, but just in case I end up having time to read, I have it. It'll be great. Um, and I've made it, I think, like 50 to 70 pages into it. I'm not totally sure, but I have read a chunk. And yeah, so that's what I'll pick up if I have time to read, which like I said, I doubt I will. As for the plays we'll be seeing, I am not, I need to remind myself what time each of them are, one second. So first we'll be seeing All's Well That Ends Well. That will be tonight, it's Thursday the 28th. So tonight at eight o'clock we'll be seeing that. Then tomorrow we'll be seeing Sweeney Todd and then The Tempest, actually we'll be seeing The Tempest first at two o'clock and then at eight o'clock we'll be seeing Sweeney Todd, the musical. And then Saturday we'll be seeing The Sound of music at two during the day and then at eight o'clock that night we will be seeing King Lear so we'll wrap it up with a tragedy a Shakespearean tragedy which I am glad about I definitely prefer the tragedies but my friend Kariana is not really a tragedy girl so it will be interesting to see how she feels finishing off on that I mean either way she's fine with it but um it's not like she's that upset about it but it's definitely not really her cup of tea necessarily. So anyway, I'll be taking you along with me. We'll get some good food. There's a lovely bookstore down there where this is taking place that we'll be able to go to, a few other things going on. So yeah, it'll be very exciting and I will be sure to take you along with me. Not sure how much I'll update in this because I am just notoriously bad at updating when I'm on vacation beyond just montage clips. but we will do our best. I'll at least try to get in hauls and kind of things as we go along. So anyway, that's what's going down in this vlog. Hope you enjoy. So it is the day after we arrived, so it's now Friday, um, and we ended up seeing All's Well That Ends Well last night for our first play. It was fine. Not a favorite comedy by any means, but I mean, it was entertaining. I'm not sad I watched it. They ended up setting it in the 40s with World War II, which I thought was really interesting, and the costumes were really lovely to look at. Mostly the plot was just not totally my favorite, and I feel like there's been other comedies that I've read and seen that have made me laugh more than this one did. So yeah, not my favorite, not my friend Kariana's favorite either, but we're glad we went still. In fact, this morning for today, we're going to start by going to a seminar discussing All's Well That Ends Well from last night. And then right after that, we will be seeing a seminar about the costumes and how they did them, which will be really interesting. We then plan on just kind of hanging out in downtown. It's a cute little downtown area where they have a bunch of shops and a bookstore, so we'll probably be going Going to that. There's also this little French kiosk restaurant place that will probably eat lunch. Then we're seeing two plays today, like I mentioned before. We're going to be seeing The Tempest first, and then tonight we'll be watching Sweeney Todd the musical. Thankfully, last night it wasn't raining badly enough. One of the theaters is outdoors, and the one that we're going to be in every night for all the night performances is the one outdoors. So we're really hoping that it doesn't rain. Um, last night it just rained a little bit but not enough to stop the play or anything, which was good. So hoping for the best on that today. I also wanted to mention I'm not going to give you a hotel room tour because it's really kind of gross. I mean, we are both poor college students still. I mean, I technically graduated, but I'm still, you know, working past that. So 
we got a pretty cheap hotel room and it shows so I'm not gonna give you a tour because I don't care to memorialize my stay here necessarily also sorry the angle keeps changing I just keep having to adjust my hand because I'm just doing this with my hand if the shaking didn't give that away um anyway yes that is the plan for today so I will of course be taking you along with us you also would have seen clips from the green show which they do before every performance in the evenings yesterday it was France themed I don't know if that will be the same every night but we'll see and yeah that's all I have to share for now so we'll just get started on the day So it is now Monday. We ended up coming back yesterday. I wanted to give you an update on Saturday morning like I did Friday morning, but I ended up having a work meeting that morning. And then right after that, I ended up having to go to a seminar. Well, we didn't have to, but we decided to go to a seminar about the plays from the day before. And then Sunday morning, we were getting all ready to get going. So I just haven't had the chance to update you since Friday morning. So I apologize for that. But it ended up being a wonderful trip. I absolutely adored it. Some thoughts on the rest of the plays we saw. So the first one we saw after we saw I last talked with you was The Tempest and it was very well done. I absolutely loved it. There were maybe a few things that were a little weird to me and I don't think The Tempest is necessarily one that I would consider a favorite at this point. I had never read or seen it before so it was very much my first time experiencing it and they ended up adding kind of this 90s grunge quality to it which was very interesting. That part was not necessarily my favorite but I I thought some aspects of how they did it were interesting and fun. My friend Cariana really didn't like the 90s grunge things, but she's a very much traditional kind of person when it comes to plays in general and especially Shakespeare. She's learning as we continue to do this each year. But yeah, I really liked The Tempest. I think Prospero is now probably one of my new favorite Shakespearean characters. The one we saw, they actually cast prop Prospero as a woman, which apparently it sounds like is actually a pretty common thing to do. And I feel like The Tempest, based on this experience, is one that I will love to rewatch over and over because I think there's so much you can do with it. There's so many different things you can apply to it, different styles, and of course, either having Prospero and Antonio as women or men, I think really has an impact. And it was just, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, it wasn't my favorite of the trip, I would say, but I did really like it. It was probably, of the three Shakespeare plays we saw, it was probably my second favorite. Then we saw Sweeney Todd that night, which was really great. I absolutely loved it. I had never seen it before, heard the music. I knew a couple of the songs, but that was about it. And the general premise, but it was really fun. It was very creepy for sure, but I'm one that I enjoy a good murder kind of story, especially set in Victorian London. So it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And the voices, 
because the talent of the actors was incredible. Like I didn't have a single person I had any critiques for. Usually when I see musicals, I have at least one or two things that I might mark, even if they all do relatively great. But for Sweeney Todd, everybody was just perfect. It was just wonderful. Granted, it was the first time I had seen it, but even my friend Kariana, who has seen it before, said all of their, everything was just pretty much perfect. There was like a couple notes she had from previous performances that she had seen where they had done different things that she liked better. But um, as far as their voices, it was all amazing. The woman who played Mrs. Lovett was absolutely incredible. Her accent was wonderful. And then her singing voice was incredible as well. So yes, that was definitely a lot of fun. Again, not necessarily a new favorite musical or anything, but it is one that I found very entertaining, very different from other musicals I've seen. And so one that I be willing to see again. Stephen Sondheim is just a master, absolutely. Then Saturday we started off by seeing Sound of Music and that was very well done. Captain Von Trapp was not necessarily our favorite. Um, we find, you know, Christopher Plummer as Captain Von Trapp in the film to be pretty swoon worthy and this guy was just not and he had kind of a weird transition from very stoic and serious to fun and it just didn't feel right. Like it just felt like he completely switched characters. And so it was just, yeah, it wasn't super well done in that way, but his voice was still great. So, you know, he at least had that and everybody's voices were very beautiful and wonderful. The kids were absolutely adorable, especially the girl playing Gretel. She was so, so cute. So it was, yeah, that one was a lot of fun, beautiful singing voices, beautiful stage set with this huge staircase that was just very lovely. So yeah, not much else to say about that and then that night for our final play we saw King Lear which did end up being my favorite because I'm just a tragedy girl what can I say they had such incredible costumes particularly for the sisters Goneril um Cordelia and Regan Reagan I always forget her name <laughs> anyway yes their dresses were absolutely gorgeous and the acting was incredible the man who played King Lear was actually 78 and he's been in several um things he was actually in Silence of the Lambs as the jail the prisoner the not the prisoner the guard or something for Hannibal Lecter I've never seen it so I don't know what his name is or anything but he played that role in the film and he's been in several other things and he yeah he was just a really great King Lear I guess he has played King Lear before he's been in Shakespeare before so he's just had a lot of practice and yeah he did an incredible incredible job um the fool was actually played by an the actor that played Richard III last year for Shakespeare Festival and he did an absolutely wonderful job as well as the fool he really did a good job of landing lines from Shakespeare's day to make them funny where I think sometimes, at least when I read it, it, you didn't pick up on the humor necessarily as much as maybe people back then would have. Plus the fool is kind of angry in this play and so um, I was very impressed by how he was able to land the humor. Yeah, they were all just wonderful and we were able to get, of course, some delicious food that I think I got a little bit of footage of. My favorite place we ate at was probably the French spot where it had French cuisine. We ended up getting butternut squash and feta cheese quiches with some salads next to them and they were really delicious. There's also this incredible Mexican restaurant that I, I actually used to live in this town where um, the festival goes on and so it's one I remember from when I lived there that I really really liked and yeah it was absolutely delicious so we went there again. We also had the opportunity to attend a few seminars so each morning after they will have a couple hours that they will devote to discussing the plays from the day before and that was really fascinating. I learned a lot about Shakespeare's time and just about different interpretations of the plays and what specifically this company decided to do in these different plays as well and why they made those decisions. It was really great. We also went to a seminar about cost the costumes. So the lead costume designer was able to present some of the costumes to us and explain some of the processes of making them and all the detail work that goes into them and how they really try to make costumes. They go across three months. And so they really have to make costumes that will last those three months and look as good on the last day as they do on the first. And so he kind of discussed how they're able to do that. We also went to an actor seminar where a couple of the actors just discussed their process and just answered questions. And that was really interesting. It wasn't maybe as interesting as the others, particularly as the actors that were there weren't necessarily ones that had, well, one of them we hadn't seen at all because she was in a couple plays that weren't 
included in what we had planned. And the other young man, he was in one of the plays we saw, he was in All's Well That Ends Well, but he was a relatively minor character. So the actors, yeah, like I said, the actors that were there weren't necessarily standouts for us, um, but they, it was still interesting to hear their stories and hear about their experiences as well. But yes, overall it ended up being a wonderful trip, a dream trip. We've decided that we want to do this every year for as long as possible together. It's just a great way to get away. It's not terribly expensive and we get to see just great plays and discuss them with each other. And it's just absolutely amazing. Just a great time to nerd out. So anyway, I wanted to show off my souvenirs and then we'll close off this vlog. So like I mentioned before, and like you would have seen in the montage, we did go to a bookstore we actually went a couple times because the first time we ended up being a little rushed and I was like I'd like a little bit more time to be able to find some stuff and so we ended up going back the next day so I ended up getting four so I ended up getting four books in that little shop the first of which is The Haunted Pool by George Sand I have not, so I read Indiana earlier this year and really did not like it. It was by George Sand. However, my dislike had more to do with the plot than necessarily with the writing style. So I've wanted to read something more by George Sand, but her works are very hard to find, especially translated into English. So when I saw this for only $3, I was like, I may as well grab it so I can have the opportunity to read more by her as I've really wanted to. And you know, if I end up not liking this, then we can kind Kind of work from there but yes I ended up picking that one up. Then I got the Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. I am trying to collect all of his works and I think I just have a couple left that or at least all of his novels. I think I just have a couple left that I have yet to buy. I think it's Martin Chuzzlewit, Barnaby Rudge, and The Mystery of Edwin Drood. I know it's not a full work but I do want to have that one as well. Um, so yes, I finally got this as well. It's a new copy, so I wasn't sure if I was going to get it, but it's only $13. And I was like, I may as well just pick it up when it's in a pretty good condition and it's a Penguin Classics. So yeah, I ended up picking it up and who knows when I'll read it, but now I at least have a copy. Then the last classic I picked up was The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. Henry James is an author, I've only read a couple short stories by him. I've read The Turn of the Screw and Daisy Miller. Turn of the Screw was okay, I liked Daisy Miller better, but even that didn't necessarily wow me. I also already own The Americans by Henry James, and I was planning to just read that before I got any more by him, but he is one that he has one or two books that I want to try regardless of whether I like his other works. So The Portrait of a Lady is one of those books I want to. I know regardless of what I feel about his other works and stuff, I want to at least give this one a try. And then probably the other one I might be willing to give a try regardless is The Golden Bowl, but I'm not totally sure on that one. But this one for sure I was like, I do want to give it a try at some point. This is a very lovely edition and it was only six dollars so I was like you know what I'm just gonna go for it we're just gonna do it and um now I have it to add to my ever-growing TBR pile and then I was doing some searching around the non-fiction section of course and I ended up finding this one it's The Discovery of King Arthur by Jeffrey Ash this is from the 80s so I don't know how accurate it is to more recent discoveries about King Arthur, but I think it will be very interesting to see how this explores this topic. I don't know anything about this book in particular. I just saw it and it sounded interesting and I decided I may as well pick it up because I don't have any nonfiction about King Arthur, which I feel like is just unfortunate for me because it's a topic I am very interested in, not just in King Arthur's stories, but also in the history and theories regarding King Arthur. So, and it's not very long as well. So I'm very excited to have this. Hopefully we'll get to it relatively soon. Although I have a lot of nonfiction that tends to take me a while to get through. So anyway, I do own this now. Okay, and then I did get a few Shakespeare focused souvenirs. The first of which was this lovely, um, King Lear t-shirt that I was able to get where it has the crown and the Joker kind of hat, the full hat, and then King Lear underneath. I really, really like it. We actually, so last year we got the Richard III t-shirt and every year they do new designs for the t-shirts. And this year, the other t-shirts were actually very good. In fact, they had another King Lear t-shirt that was in this other style that was like, it was like four boxes 
and each of the boxes had a different picture in it and then it said the name of the play underneath and they weren't awful but they just weren't my favorite and so I was kind of leaning towards this anyway because it just had a better design but my friend first of all didn't like white t-shirts but then we ended up finding a gray one but then she wanted to see if she could choose one at the end so after we had seen everything but it wasn't going to be open Sunday we were leaving Sunday but they were open for intermission for the evening place. So we're like, okay, hopefully you can decide halfway through King Lear which one you want. And we were kind of almost thinking we might not get any because we were like, I don't know, I don't really like the designs of those. I don't really know if I care enough to get the King Lear one. Do I like King Lear enough? I don't know. It's been long enough since I've read King Lear that I was like, I don't remember if I, I mean, I remember enjoying it, but it wasn't necessarily when I loved, loved. So I really wasn't sure. And even by the intermission, I was like, I mean, I'm fine either way, but my friend like immediately at intermission grabbed her bag and turned to me and was like, let's go. And I was like, oh, okay, let's go. So we went and she was like, I know what I'm getting. I'm getting a King Lear one. So I was like, okay. Okay, I guess I will too. So we got the King Lear t-shirt and I am glad I ended up getting this one too because of the way it's designed. It will work a lot better with skirts than the other t-shirts will, um, which sometimes I just like to wear a t-shirt and a skirt. So that will be really nice for that. The other Shakespearean souvenir I ended up picking up was this Shakespeare's Words, a glossary and language companion. So it's basically a dictionary of words that Shakespeare uses so you're able to get a better understanding of their meaning which I think will just be so nice to use. I know they have modern language kind of translations of Shakespeare to help people but I just have always wanted to read the actual Shakespeare and then you know be able to understand the words in that. Um, that's been my focus because I think the poetry just works better that way. I think there's language elements that just can't translate well to modern um, English. So I feel like this will be perfect to allow me to still better understand what I'm reading without necessarily, you know, kind of stepping me along, babying me along the way, um, the way some of those modern translations do. So very excited to have this and we'll see. I'll need to read at least one more Shakespeare play by the end of the year for my goals. Um, so I'll probably try to remember to use this for that and yeah, it should be great. Apparently it's by Penguin, so you know, that's really nice. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm super excited to have this. And that is everything, so thank you so much for watching. If you've been watching, let me know down below what your favorite Shakespeare play is, what you think of any of the plays I've mentioned, the plays or musicals that I've mentioned. I hope you're having a wonderful reading week and I will see you next time. Bye!